Here's a circle, and suppose this arc measures 140 degrees. In other words, its central angle is 140 degrees. And here's an inscribed angle with the same red arc. What's the measure of this angle? And if you'd like to review, click down here instead. Excellent! So this inscribed angle is half of 140, or 70 degrees. Next, let's look at an arc that's slightly bigger. Now our arc takes up half the circumference, and our central angle is a straight line. So now what's the measure of the arc and the central angle? Exactly! This central angle measures 180 degrees. Also, this straight line going through the center of the circle is the circle's diameter. So if we draw an inscribed angle to this 180 degree arc above the diameter, then what's the measure of this angle? Great! So this inscribed angle drawn to this circle's diameter is 90 degrees, meaning it's a right angle. And it turns out that every inscribed angle drawn to a circle's diameter will always be a right angle. Let's look at another example. Here's a circle, and let's pick any diameter, like this one here. And we can also pick any point on the circumference. No matter which diameter you pick, and which point you pick, the point will always make a right angle with the diameter, because this arc measures 180 degrees, meaning this inscribed angle must be half of that, or 90 degrees. Now with this interactive, you can test for yourself whether an inscribed angle to the diameter is always 90 degrees. Then, when you're ready, try answering this question, which asks what kind of triangle is formed by these three points? An acute triangle, a right triangle, or an obtuse triangle? Now here's another circle, and let's draw in a diameter. Let's also draw an inscribed angle to the diameter, and suppose this angle up here measures 40 degrees. See if you can figure out the measure of the angle down here. And if you get stuck, just click over here. Excellent work! This is a right angle over here, and using the fact that a triangle's three angles add up to 180, you can show that this angle measures 50 degrees. Let's try one more sample problem with inscribed angles and diameters. Now here's another inscribed angle to the diameter, and suppose this cord down here has length 6, and this cord up here has length 8. Can you use these facts to calculate this circle's radius? If you're not sure, click here, and we'll figure this out together. Let's start with a circle whose radius is r. What's the circumference of this circle, in terms of r? In other words, what's the total length around the circle? Right, the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times its radius. Next, let's look at an arc on this circle. And let's also draw in the central angle for this arc. What would you estimate is the measure of this central angle? Great! Now in this lesson, you'll be calculating the lengths of arcs. We'll start by estimating. So for example, here's a circle with radius 6. Let's double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Great. And here's an arc whose central angle is 90 degrees. How long is this arc? Well, we can approximate it by counting these hashes. It looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then a little bit. So maybe it's about 9.3 or 9.4. You can draw different arcs by dragging these two yellow dots around the circle, and you can change the radius by dragging the circle in and out. So give this question a shot. In a circle with radius 5, approximately how long is an arc whose central angle is 130 degrees? Excellent! So here's an arc that's 130 degrees in a circle with radius 5. Sure enough, this arc has a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It seems to be just a little longer than 11. So next, let's see if we can come up with an exact formula for finding the length of an arc. Let's start with an arc that's exactly half of a circle. In other words, this angle here is a straight angle, or 180 degrees. 
How long is this arc in terms of the circle's radius r? If you're not sure, feel free to ask for a hint. Excellent! So if the entire circumference is 2 pi r, then the length of this arc is half of that, so it's 1 half times 2 pi r. The 2 up here cancels with the 2 down here, so the length of this arc is pi times r. Whatever the radius is, multiply it by pi, and that's the length of half a circle. Now where did this fraction 1 half come from? Well, this arc is half of the circle. In other words, this 180 degree angle here is half of the 360 degrees that make up a complete rotation around a circle. So one half is the same thing as 180 degrees divided by 360 degrees. Let's try another example. Take a look at this arc over here, whose central angle measures 90 degrees. How long is this arc in terms of r? And if you'd like to review multiplying fractions instead, click down here. Right, so this arc is one quarter of the circle, so its length is one fourth times two pi r. And that equals one half pi r. And you could also write this as pi r over two. But again, where did this fraction come from? Well, this arc represents one fourth of the circle, just as this 90 degree angle is one fourth of the full 360 degrees in a circle. So the length of this arc is 90 over 360 times 2 pi r. So do you see a pattern for finding the length of an arc? Suppose you have this arc here, whose central angle measures 70 degrees. How long is this arc in terms of r? Nicely done. To find the length of this arc, we can start by dividing 70 by 360. So this fraction is how much of the circle the arc represents. And to find the length of the arc, we can multiply this fraction by the circumference, 2 pi r. So for a circle with radius r, an arc of 70 degrees will always have a length of 70 divided by 360 times 2 pi r. Can you come up with a general formula? So suppose you have an arc whose central angle is theta. How long is the arc in terms of both the angle theta and the radius r? Precisely. So first you can divide theta by 360 degrees. Whatever theta equals, this fraction tells you how much of the circle the arc represents. Then to find the arc length, you can multiply this by the circumference, 2 pi r. And this is the general formula for finding the length of an arc. So remember, you want to figure out what fraction of the circle the arc represents and then multiply that by the total length around the circle, the circumference. Let's go back to an earlier example. You have a circle with radius 5 and an arc whose central angle is 130 degrees. You already estimated the arc length as being approximately 11. At this point, can you calculate the exact length of this arc? If you need some help, definitely ask for a hint. Great, so again, here's the formula you found. So for your final challenge, suppose you have a circle whose radius is 3, and now suppose you have an arc whose length is 5. And let's call this arc's central angle theta. Can you use this formula to calculate theta? Give your answer to at least one decimal place. 